I just got back from northern Minnesota where I spent three hours standing in a river photographing a waterfall. I was so excited for the fall colors that I hardly noticed the air temperature was just barely above freezing. It was one of those incredible scenes that blows you away. But when I got home, I struggled to process the image in a way that captured the excitement I felt in person. The light was just too flat as often happens in the fall, but I pushed through and came up with an image that I absolutely love. And in this tutorial, I'll show you exactly how I did it. Here inside Lightroom, you can see my original raw image. And my vision here, what I saw in person was this beautiful majestic waterfall that I was looking up around the bend towards this tree, which really kind of stood out from the sky and all the rest of the surroundings, which included a fair bit of color in the sky and a really beautiful line of trees. But of course, there's almost no color in this image. All the trees are dark, dingy. The rocks compete for your attention. The sky really dominates. So we have to do a lot to help separate the most important aspects of this image. And I'm gonna start by focusing on the water in the foreground. So let's right click and choose to create a virtual copy. So we'll keep our original reference and work on this virtual copy. And I wanna make this water look a lot closer to white. So I need to take out some of the yellow by bringing the white balance down to around 5,500 and adding a little magenta to take out that green, maybe around five or so, balances things out a lot better. Now to make this water pop, I can bring up the whites a fair bit, maybe around 50 or something like that. And you can see how that's getting a lot better, but of course the sky is just getting more blown out than it ever was. So now we can take the highlights and drag them down to offset that a bit to around minus 40. The shadow detail in the image, of course, could be better. So let's take our shadows up to around the uh, 30, 40 mark here. Try that on for size and bring up the blacks as well to deal with that black clipping to around 23, 25-ish like that. So we've balanced out the overall tones by bringing down the sky and bringing up the shadows. But what we're lacking right now is some punch in the image. I'm gonna go down to the tone curve and bring up the light slider, which will really nicely help make that foreground start to pop. Of course, it's pushing the sky kind of out of bounds and we're clipping in a number of places. So if I go click for a linear gradient, I can go and drag this down. And then just through this adjustment to the sky alone, bring these highlights down maybe around minus 25 points or so and keep that where it needs to be. So that's looking a lot better. And at this point, I think we can do some things to make the color look more interesting here. If we change our color profile and try Adobe Color, that's adding some nice contrast and some nice color. So I like where that's going. And then these trees could start to stand out a bit more, especially the uh, yellow, orange, and red values. So if we go to Luminance in HSL and bring up our reds, and our oranges and our yellows, that will help those areas start to stand out from before to after, just giving them a little bit more prominence, which is gonna help separate the background from this tree. And we wanna really make that tree stand out. The other thing is I just wanna bring out more of the natural color in this image. If I slide all the way down to camera calibration, the blue saturation often helps. And in this case, it really helps with that tree line there. So I'm going all the way to 100 on that. So I'm thinking that is looking pretty good there. Just kind of consider overall, maybe bring a little bit more tint, even to like about plus seven. And I think that looks pretty good as a basis for the image. Now you could just stop here if that's what your vision is for the raw, but I think we can take things a lot further in terms of adding more pop to this tree line and this tree in particular, and then start to separate the rocks and the water here. So what I wanna do is create another version of this image that's gonna be more punchy in selective areas and then we'll send them over to Photoshop and blend them together. So I'm gonna right click and let's go to create another virtual copy. So we're starting from this same place and now we can make a few adjustments here and I'm gonna go and probably warm this version up a bit. So maybe take it to around 5,800 or something like that. The uh, tint on the sky is a little heavy so I'm gonna bring that down to around one or two, something like that. Our highlights don't need to be as suppressed here as we let things kind of glow though the whites are heading towards clipping so let's actually bring the whites and bound them around minus 40 minus 50 there and at this point the sky is looking fairly flat in order to give it a little more differentiation a great tool is often the dehaze slider if we bring that up to 40 or 50 or so you can see that's really starting to help create some nice detail in that sky and we can add even more punch by going down to our light tone curve here 
and bring that even further, maybe towards, oh, 70, 75 ish to really make that sky start to sing. That's looking a lot more interesting. Now I wouldn't mind giving the sky more color separation, which we can do down in the split toning. So split toning, we can add a little warmth to the highlights and coolness to the shadow. So let's just take the highlights around kind of the 40 mark. And if you hold alt or option, when you do that, you can see what it's going to be adding there as kind of a glow. And let's bring that saturation up just a little bit. We don't need a whole lot, maybe 10. Let's take our shadows. If we hold alt or option, we can see right around the 225 mark usually. It looks really good. And we're just bringing a little bit there to maybe around 10 or 20. And at this point, it's adding warmth across the entire cloud. I'd like to restrain it to just the brightest parts of the sky. If we look from before to after, you see how it's kind of warming the cloud overall. I really want to restrict that. I can do that with a balance slider. I don't usually use this, but if you hold alter option, you can see where the highlights and shadows split. If I move left, the highlights are going to start to dominate or the shadows are going to dominate. I mean, less highlights. So the highlights are just in the brightest parts of the cloud. And I think that's a better looking color separation now from before to after. See how that kind of nicely separates in the sky. And don't worry about things like the water that are getting too blue because we're not going to brush this in here. This is just the version for the sky in this tree line. So I think that's been pretty helpful. Lastly, the color here, I wouldn't mind more pop in these trees. We already pushed the blue slider up quite a bit. We could play with adding some more color, but what I'd like to do is take these colors that were a little bit pre-peaked, they weren't full orange, and push them in that direction. So I'm actually gonna change the color instead of enhancing it by bringing this blue hue to the left. And we bring that around maybe minus 30, minus 40, you can see that orange color, it's starting to pick up. And again, it looks really strong, but we're gonna blend this with the other image. So this is not the final tree color. This is the direction we're gonna head when we blend these two versions together. And at this point, it's looking pretty good, but the tree itself is a little dark. I'm worried about a loss of detail in the tree. So let's go click for a radial gradient, and we'll just draw a gradient around this tree like so. And then we can go and bring up the shadows which I can see are going outside of this. So I need to flip it by clicking invert. So now it's lightening that tree. And let's go and bring up the exposure a little bit to maybe the uh, 0.25 quarter stop there. And that's just lightening that tree. If I delete that for a second, you can see before to after how it's lightening that tree and just preserving some detail. We'll extract more of that in Photoshop, but we need a baseline to work with. And with that, I think we've got all the ingredients we need from our raw file. So let's select all three, including the original, just for reference. Right click, and we're gonna go choose Edit In, and open it as Smart Object in Photoshop, which will give us the ability to make more changes to the raw if we need to. Here inside Photoshop, we have all three images. We have our original raw for comparison, we've got our base, and then we've got our punchier version that we wanna combine all these together. So I'm just gonna simply right click on each layer, and go choose to duplicate and send it over to the first image there. So click OK. We've copied that. We can close that now. And now I need to copy this. I'm going to right click and again go up to duplicate layer, tell it to go to the other document, click OK. And then I can close this. And in doing so, now I have all three layers in the same document. You can see we've got our original raw down here, which I'm going to rename. If we mark that, right click and make it red. So this is a reference of where we started. Let's hide that. And now we've got our detail and our base layer. So let's move our base layer to the bottom. That's the foundation of the image. And we're gonna blend in these trees in the skyline where we want it and keep this original foreground here. So to do that, we need a black layer mask so we can start to selectively reveal parts of the image. I'm gonna alt click on mask for a black mask. And now we want to start brushing in the sky by painting white to reveal those areas. But to do so, I'd like to bias it towards the highlights, which means I should be using a luminosity selection. And I can go click on the L button in Lumenzia for a lights preview. The whiter areas here are the ones that will be most adjusted when I paint through this as a selection. So I'll be able to paint freely in the sky and not so much in areas like this rock that shouldn't change. But I do want to bring the slider up to the top and allow a little bit more painting on these trees because I do want to paint these without painting too much on this. So it's just biasing the paint. It's not making some hard delineation from one or the other. It's just kind of directional. Let's go click on cell to load that as our active selection. And we see the cell buttons like green let us know that that is ready to go. 
We just now need to go grab a paintbrush. I'm gonna go hit B for my brush. Make sure I've got white paint in the foreground, high opacity, low flow around 9% and a soft brush 25% is great. So let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing here. And now I'm just gonna brush through that selection and kind of hit the whole top of this image once, make sure that's kind of nicely come through. And then again, to really hit that tree area pretty hard and maybe kind of radiate out a bit from the tree, almost like kind of a vignetted uh, shape to the sky that I'm doing there. And if we look from before to after, you can see that subtlety, how you see how the sky is getting more interesting there. The trees are getting more interesting, you know, especially this one. I think that's a nice look. And if we were to shift click this, we can see what happens if we went a little further. And I think maybe right around the tree here, I can add it a little bit, touch more drama and that little shift is, is nice there. Maybe at the corners a bit. And I'm just gonna paint this back a little bit right there and right there, soften that up. So just kind of dial in the exact amount that I want. That's looking good. Let's zoom back, hitting Command or Control D to deselect. We can see the cell button's no longer lit, so that's gone. We can move on to the next thing we wanna adjust, which I think we should be focusing on this tree, really make that stand out. And what I wanna do is make it brighter and make sure it stays high contrast, so a brightness contrast adjustment is perfect. We'll go open this up. We'll bring up the brightness, which is gonna lighten the tree. We'll bring up the contrast, which is trying to preserve that contrast. And that is directionally where we wanna go on the tree. But of course, we don't wanna do this to the image. This is a terrible adjustment for almost everything but the tree. What we need again is a layer mask to target just the tree. So we're gonna Alt click on mask to help give us a black uh, mask to start from. And we'll paint white to reveal this tree area. And in order to help target that tree, it would really help to have some guidance and a luminosity selection. We'll do that once again. If I go click on the zone picker in Lumensia, I can go and sample from the tree itself, say okay, and that's gonna give me a luminosity mass that's targeting those areas in that tree. And I can make it even more restrictive because what I wouldn't mind doing is maybe avoiding some of the darker parts of this tree being hit as much as they might be. I could even lift this up a little bit and just that subtle little bit of adjustment there just trying to make sure it's really hitting the parts of the tree that i care about where the white here is what's going to be paintable you know it's going to be what's selected versus the black the sky is going to be protected so now i'm going to load that as my selection by clicking on cell and hitting b for my brush i'm going to take my flow way down here i don't need to go too quickly here and shrink it down and you start to brush over these tree areas. So now what I'm doing is painting through that uh, zone preview that I created with Lemenzia onto not only this tree, but this tree, because what I wanna do here is I wanna move this tree towards these orange colors, which means it needs to get more orange, but it also needs to get lighter. So I am also hitting this tree, which just coincidentally works great from the same selection, which is why I'm doing it now, so. Kind of brush this area, make sure the tips of this tree are looking pretty good. And it's you know moving pretty slow and subtle. So let's take a look from before to after and see how nicely that lightens things up. And just make sure we hit some of the edges of this tree, make sure they're really good. Out of these outer branches here, hit some of this background. And uh, gonna hit the outer edges one last time here, just make sure the Tips of that tree look really good. And I think that is really looking pretty good there. So let's zip back. And I think this tree is looking really nice. I'd like to finish this tree, which means now that we've lightened it, we need to make a color adjustment. So let's hit Command or Control D to deselect and adjust this color. And what we can do is use a selective color adjustment. Now this is a more advanced tool in Photoshop and I'm not gonna get into the details here too much, so I'm gonna link a video from the end here where you can go on and learn more about how to use selective color to get great fall color. But what I briefly wanna do is target the yellows. This is a yellow color, even though it's kind of green, Photoshop considers it yellow, and make some color adjustments to it. So what we wanna do is give it more red by removing cyan, and we'll give it more magenta, more yellow. And you see it's really getting very orange there. 
I don't think we need to go that far. Let's back it off with some blacks to maybe around minus 50 or so. And you see that directionally is the right color. We just need to target it to this tree. And in order to do that, we need a layer mask, but we already have one. We already painted here. If we alter option click between the layers, if we hold alter option and get this little bent arrow and then click, now you have a clipping mask, which means that this is operating on the areas that are affected by this layer mask. And so now from before to after, see how it's hitting that tree and giving us that color where we wanted it without spilling all over the place in other parts of the image. So I think that really does a nice job of helping this tree stand out from the remainder of this other tree. So with that, let's now take a look at the next area of color I'd like to hit, which is this moss. I thought the moss was really beautiful. It was a soft overcast day and the colors really popped in person, but they look still kind of flat here. So I'm gonna create another selective color adjustment layer. This one is gonna be targeting this moss area. And with the yellows, we'll make a few more adjustments. The first thing we need to do is get more green by subtracting magenta, right? So obviously that just got nuclear green. We don't need it to be quite so green. A little bit of red will help that. So we'll bring down the cyan to soften it up a bit. And if we want to, we could add in a little bit of the blacks to suck back some of that color. And I think that's probably more the kind of extra green we want. But of course, we don't want to be spilling over into the background in all these areas. So once again, we want a layer mask by alt clicking on mask for a black mask, hitting B for our brush. And this time we don't need a luminosity selection because the green is already really well targeted down in the bottom here. So we can just freehand paint in these areas to reveal the moss. So just painting white over those areas and just look from before to after, see how that's nicely bringing forth some of that color in the moss that I think really completes the image and creates more separation. So you see where the rocks are and where the water is spilling down here. And I think that looks great. All right, so now we got the moss. The next thing I'm thinking is to create more separation with the water and the rocks here. And you know, even this tree could get brightened up a little bit. So all those things I wanna brighten, we can do by dodging the image. So I'm gonna go click on Dodge in Lumenzia. We use a solid fill adjustment, clicking on Dodge Burn, and just use white. We don't want to impart any color. We're going to use white, and we'll dodge by using this white color, which you can see is going to move the image in this direction. So the water's going to get brighter. The shadows are going to show through more. Everything's going to get lightened up. We could consider the overlay blend mode. And in fact, I kind of like the direction that's going with a little more contrast. So let's stick with that. And I'm going to click on this layer mask to make it active. So everything's hidden. And now we just need to reveal it in the correct areas. And once again, I, I wanna hit areas selectively. So to hit this water, we can use a luminosity selection by clicking on L in Lumencia. Probably open that up a bit to the shadows. And now hitting cell to load that as my active selection. So now when I brush through this, instead of lightening all these shadow areas as much, it's gonna be biasing towards the water. So again, B for my brush. And let's zoom in a little bit and now just brushing over these areas. And I'm at a very low flow at 1%. I can probably kick this up a little bit, but you generally wanna keep it pretty low, like two, 3% is oftentimes good. There we go. Sometimes I really struggle to do that with the old pen. I'm not sure why. And as you're moving through here, be sure to resize your brush as needed so that you're targeting the right areas and not spilling over. So I'm really thinking about the water creating this sense of flow going through the image here. Just kind of brightening up these key areas. And so it's the you know major spill areas that I want to lighten there. And let's look from before to after, see how that nicely lightens those areas, bring forth more of that water detail. Uh, the rocks here, if I wanna create more detail, I can shift click and see where that would go. And I'm thinking maybe a little bit more separation on this edge of the rock here, bring a little bit more detail, just subtly separate that rock from before to after that little bit of shadow detail. I want to make sure that this rock doesn't blend into the next rock. And the next way I can do that is actually to start brushing on this part of the rock. So let's do that by hitting W for a quick select. And now let's go and actually I'm going to hit Command D to deselect, start fresh and just select this rock here. So just kind of rolling over these areas to select as much of that rock as I need to. 
And now it's targeted to the highlight edges of this rock. I'm gonna hit B for my brush once again. This time I'm gonna take my flow way down, go nice, soft, and subtle. Command H will hide the marching ants. We don't have to look at them, but they are still active. And now just kind of brush over those areas to bring forward a little more detail. Deselect and just hit the bottom of that rock there. But from before to after, see, so let's bring out more of that rock detail and helping you see the difference from one rock to the next. Next up, I think this tree could be a little bit more separated as well. So let's zoom in on it and we can think about how to separate it. Uh, another darks zone, so maybe zone B. Looks like that's hitting the tree pretty well, but I'm gonna tighten it up by bringing this slider down, the precision slider. And what I'd like to do is minimize the core of the tree so the needles are more what's gonna be painted. And that looks like that'll do nicely to hit the edges of the tree without necessarily lightening the entire tree in an even way, just the highlight parts of the tree. So we'll click on cell to load that as a selection. B for my brush once again, keeping the flow nice and low. And now as I brush over these areas, it's going to lighten these edges of the tree without necessarily lightening up the deep core parts. And this is just going to help further make this tree stand out a bit. And I can kind of go over these little areas here where I wanna create more of a sensation of one branch's needles versus the next. And just make that tree feel a little bit more dimensional. But from before to after, you see how that's starting to liven up that tree. And as we step back, really adding kind of a nice glow and some depth and difference in the image. So I think that's looking really good. I'm gonna hit Command or Control D to deselect. The water, I think, could get a little bit more pop and contrast. So let's add another brightness contrast adjustment. We'll bring the contrast way up, which is punishing the shadows. So let's bring the brightness up to offset that and maybe bring the brightness to around 50. And what I wanna do is paint over these areas of water to add a little bit more differentiation. Now, the brightest parts are almost getting to be a bit too much. So let's bring this down a little bit and maybe not even have as much contrast here. But from before and after, you can see the direction that's gonna head for the water to give it a little bit more, um, just a strong feel in that water. And we'll try that. We're gonna Alt click on mask for black layer mask and hitting B for our brush. And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. I'm not targeting a specific tonal range. In this case, I'm kind of hitting all of the water just in certain areas. So I'm gonna brush over these areas where I want to make things look a little bit more dramatic and make sure again, you're resizing that brush as you need to hit the right areas. But this is just gonna add a little bit more strength to that water. And you can see from before and after the direction that's going. And again, it really kind of brush through a little bit of extra contrast. And I think that's looking really good. If we were to take it further, we could go and bring it through in a few areas here. I'm just shift clicking on that mask to see what happens when I keep painting. And that's telling me that I should go a little bit further here to strengthen out a few core areas that I'd like to really look like they're splashing and just add that little bit of energy to the scene here. I can strengthen a few areas like this, these little bits of water coming down that are creating that sense of motion in the scene. And I think that looks really good. Just a soft, subtle bit of adjustment there. Next, I'm thinking I'm gonna hit L for the lasso to add a vignette. So I'm just gonna kind of select the outer edges of this document like that. Click on vignette in Lumenzia. We'll go with a layer mask and you can see how it's darken the edges to really draw your eyes in from before to after. And overall, let's take a look at what we've done with this image, starting from our raw. If I alt click on the raw, you can see this original starting point where I was stuck up top, maybe going to the water and then just bouncing around to after has a much better directional flow. And it really now brings you up through the water to that tree and separates that tree with the color from the background. Now be sure to click to the next video. We can learn more about how you use selective color to really make fall colors pop.